Waves and understanding waves are very important in physics. We have different types of waves. So, for example, we have longitudinal waves and we have transverse waves and they can be used in things such as sound. They can be used when studying light. Really important if you go on into quantum mechanics. Now, a longitudinal wave, what you would have to imagine is that you held a slinky in your hand and you pushed it out. So if you pushed it across the surface, what you would get are areas of compression. So the coils would be tight together and then you would get areas of um, refract, re refraction. Sorry about that. So we would have compression. Now these are like sound waves right here. So this is your area of rarefraction. So this is where the waves are condensed and then spread out. So once again, we took a slinky, we held it in our hand and we pushed it. This is a longitudinal wave. Now a transverse wave will travel up and down. This is like taking a slinky on the ground and then giving it a flick, giving it a flick and it goes back and forth. So it's the two different types of patterns. Sorry for my horrible uh, artwork. This is like a light wave, okay? Sort of looks like a mechanical wave on a beach, right? With the waves coming in. Um, where this one goes back and forth this way, this travels like this. Um, mechanic, mechanical waves versus ethereal waves. A mechanical wave needs particles. So picture a wave at a beach. That kind of wave needs particles to travel through, where an ethereal wave, like light, um, can go through a vacuum. Vacuums don't have particles in them. So outer space is a vacuum. So here what we're talking about is we're talking about light. So light has to get from the sun to earth by going through space. It goes through a vacuum. So, so far we've got a few terms. We've got what a longitudinal wave is versus a transverse wave. We got mechanical versus ethereal. Now, Here's the transverse wave, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at something called frequency versus period. So we've got a couple of formulas here that we have to talk about. The first thing we need to do is figure out what a wavelength is. A wavelength is when you pick a spot on a wave, travel until you get back to that same spot again. So let's do a different wavelength. We can start from anywhere. Let's start from here and travel till we get to that same spot on a wave again. So the distance from here to here is called wavelength and the symbol is lambda right there. While we're on this topic we can talk about a few other um, parts of a wave. We can talk about a crest which is the top. We can talk about the trough which is the bottom of the wave. From the middle up, not from the bottom up, but from the middle of the wave up is called the amplitude. So these are just some of the parts of a wave. Now, amplitude um, will dictate frequency. So if it was a sound, or sorry, amplitude will dictate intensity, not frequency. So if we were looking at a wave and it was a sound wave, the higher it is, the more intense or the louder it would be. Okay. So, this whole frequency thing is going to become important later on. So when we talk about wavelength, we'll relate that to frequency later on. The period of a wave is the time it takes for a wave to pass a point. And that's measured in seconds. And a frequency is the number of waves that pass a point in one second. And we call these hertz. 
Now, we're going to develop these two ideas more and more as we go along. So a period is the time it takes in seconds for a wave to pass a point, and frequency is the number of waves that pass a point in one second measured in what's called hertz. If we took a track and you were running around the track, so you started here and you run around, um, the period would be the time for one cycle. So it's the time for one cycle to occur. Now, some interesting re relationships that are going to be important to remember. If you know the frequency, time equals 1 divided by frequency. And if you know the period, then um, 1 divided by the period is the frequency. Just a couple of things to keep in mind as we go through here. This will become more um, important as we go through this unit. This is just some of the background information. If we wanted to take a look at the speed of a wave, speed is equal to distance over time. So how do we get distance when we're looking at waves? It's the wavelength. Okay, how do we get time? Time is measured by the period, which is 1 over the frequency. The period is 1 over the frequency. So if we move this around, 1 over f is equal to lambda times f. So velocity is equal to lambda times f. So the frequency, the number of waves that pass a point in one second, times the wavelength is equal to the velocity of the wave. Now, we can rearrange this formula so that we can determine different things. Here's what's important for you to understand. I've put a couple of movies into the content, so I've placed a couple of movies in there. Remember, to watch those movies, what you have to do is you have to copy the link. You can't press on the link. You've got to copy it, and you've got to put it in a new tab, and I think it'll, under, or it'll help with some of the understanding. What I don't like about this content at this point is they keep going back to pendulums for waves. I wish they would focus on what the waves actually looks like, which is a longitudinal wave. And now I've shown a slinky here to demonstrate this, but it shows the shape of the wave and a transverse wave. Please try and watch the videos that I have showing longitudinal transverse waves, showing how to do frequency and period calculations and what they are. Know the anatomy of a wave, so know the key terms and know how to use these formulas right here. I believe there's some questions at the end of the content that go through these formulas and help you to understand them.